In this video, we will be comparing these two radios against each other. Sure, they look similar, but one is a fraction of the price of the other one. But is this radio worth three times more than the other radio? We will be taking a closer look at that question, so stay with us. Hey, my name is Josh and with Breakers Stereo and Performance, and we will be comparing Jensen's CAR8000 against JVC's KW-Z1000W. Now, both are 10.1 inch floating monitor receivers, but the JVC retails for $1,199 and the Jensen goes for only $399. So, What's the difference besides the price? Is the JVC really worth that much? Now we've put out a number of videos that cover the floating panel radio category. And if you're not familiar with this type of radio, these are radios that fit into a single or a double din opening. And the display attaches to the front of the radio allowing for a much bigger screen. A traditional double din radio will max out to about seven inches because of their physical limitations. But with the floating screen design, that limitation is not there. So manufacturers are pushing the boundaries on the screen size of these radios. And every video that we've put out, some people have commented that they're overpriced. So we decided to take a look at one of our top selling radios and one price at a fraction of its price to see the similarities and the differences to see which radio will work better for your wants and needs. We'll do an unboxing, go over the features while firing these things up, and finally we'll go over the pros and cons list for each stereo. So we previously showcased the JVC KWZ1000W in our last video. So if you want to check that out, there's a link in the description below taking you directly to that video. If this is your first time on our channel, we want to welcome you and hope you find this content useful. Also, consider joining our tribe of auto enthusiasts by subscribing to our channel where we cover all the best in car audio, suspension, and performance parts. Also, both of these radios can be purchased on our website. There are links in the description below, taking you directly to the product page. Remember, we do have financing available. Simply add to the cart, pick a financing option, get approved, and we'll send your gear out to you ASAP. Okay, so let's get going. Okay, so we'll start with the Jensen CAR8000. This radio is a 10.1 inch monitor with Bluetooth for phone calls and music playback, wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto, a front and rear USB input, eight band equalizer, time alignment, three sets of four volt pre-outs, and 16 watts times four, also steering wheel control ready. And now the JVC KW-Z1000W. It's a 10.1 inch capacitive touchscreen, Bluetooth for phone call and music, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, rear USB input, 13 band EQ, time alignment, three sets of 5 volt preouts, and a little more power at 22 watts times four RMS. Okay, those are some of the common features. Here's what you get extra with the JVC. An HD screen, 1080 by 720 opposed to the standard screen. Now Jensen doesn't list a pixel count, so that count is unknown. Wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. The Jensen is only wired for those features. Wireless Android mirroring for full mirroring capabilities and no mirror options on the Jensen. Wired iPhone mirroring through a JVC app. Also an HDMI input, which is an easier way to mirror an iPhone and the Jensen does not have HDMI. A lot of different mounting options. Now the Jensen will only go forward about a quarter inch and tilt in either 15% negative or 15% positive. And this screen does not move up and down. So as you see, once it's in the dash, you will have these exposed on the bottom. The JVC has much more mounting options and you're able to configure this in many more cars than the Jensen. iDataLink, Maestro, and Sirius XM compatible. Neither one is available on the Jensen radio. Four camera input. Now the Jensen only has a rear camera input and a fully customizable display background, including live displays. And the Jensen is very limited when it comes to this. A selectable graphic or parametric EQ. And finally, a selectable two-way or three-way network crossover. Jensen only has a crossover sitting on the subchannel. And here's the only feature that the Jensen has that the JVC does not. A CD DVD player for music and video playback. Okay, so let's do the unboxing on both so you can see what they come with. All right, so in this little box is going to be your wiring, your screws, and all that stuff. So here's your harness, Bluetooth mic, mounting screws, and then you have your RCA inputs and outputs, video output, 
you have your camera output. And these are the small plates that go on the side of the monitor after you mount them to the body. And then you do get a remote control with this. And then the trim ring. Okay, so as you can see, this is a doubled in and then your screen. You have a harness that basically just plugs right dead into the screen. And then from here, you're gonna mount the screen to the body. So on the back of the radio, you have your harness, your mic input for your Bluetooth. And then these are the connections for the harnesses on the RCA inputs and outputs, and also for your camera. And then you have your antenna input and then your USB. It doesn't give you a whole lot of options when it comes to pushing this thing out. Um, so let me go ahead and set this really quick. And then from here, you're able to swing it forward or back. So there's only two adjustments. That to me is not an adjustment. It looks like that would not fit in there. So you have that adjustment here or this adjustment here. On to the JVC. Okay, so these are your brackets. Now it's important that you use this bracket. This goes in between the body of the chassis and the screen. If you don't have this in, then it will not work. So if you wired it up and you can't figure out why it won't turn on, it's because you don't have that bracket in. Bluetooth mic, USB extension, GPS antenna. So when you're using navigation with your smartphone, it uses that antenna for accuracy. You have your standard harness, owner's manual. This is the hardware that attaches the screen to the body. And these are chassis screws. And then this is a steering wheel control plug. Now, if you have an older vehicle, let's say 2000, 2001, 2002, let's say Toyota, and it's analog steering wheel controls, then this will work. But if it's a new vehicle and it's any type of data, this will not work and you will need either a pack part or an access part in order to use the steering wheel controls. So again, this is for older vehicles, probably 99 times out of 100, you're not gonna be able to use this for, for your vehicle unless it's older. All right. All right, so this is your screen, a big, beautiful 10.1 inch screen. Okay, so here's a feature that both the Kenwin and the JVC has that's definitely worth mentioning, is it has the optical bonding on the display. And the benefit for this is if it's in the sun and it's in direct sunlight, it'll actually give it a lower reflection so that you're able to see the nice bright colors that this display has to offer. And here's your body. What you do is take your screen, gets mounted like this. You got a couple of screws that you insert. And then again, the panel goes over the top. All right, so here are the dimensions on the screen. So you're looking at about 10.3 across. And on the height, you're looking at about 7.1. So there is a depth adjustment here. So you loosen a couple of screws and this will actually move out uh, 0.8125 according to the website. And then also there is the ability to have tilt. And on here, you can adjust the angle um, from either negative 10, okay, or you can go positive 45. So it depends on where is that in the dash. You can adjust that accordingly. And then also, you have height adjustment. You just loosen these screws here, and then there's the ability to move this up and down about an inch and a half. Okay, so now for the connections on the back. You have a recess HDMI input simply unscrew, remove the plate, insert the cable, and then put the plate back on and screw in to secure. Serious XM inputs here. Your iDatalink Maestro piece inputs are here and here. Your main harness is here. On the RCAs, you have front, rear, and sub. Again, these are five volt pre-outs. You have an AV input, HDMI on the pigtail. AM FM antenna input and here you have your videos you have the video in and the video output on the top we have our camera inputs you have the front view camera you have the rear camera and then you have the third view camera now if you want to use the fourth camera input you're going to use the video in and then you're going to assign that but we'll show you how to do that here in a minute 
And then you have the GPS input antenna. Again, that's for when you're using navigation through your smartphone. Now let's take a look at the JVC. So this is your home screen. Let's go ahead and take a look at your source menu. You have HD radio, wireless mirroring for Android. You have Bluetooth audio, USB, iPod, HDMI, which is good for mirroring iPhones. So you just get the HDMI to the lightning cable, AVN, Sirius XM, and then here you have on this menu, these icons are reserved for your iDataLink Maestro piece. All right, so now let's take a look at the audio features. So on your audio features, you have your speaker and crossover setup here first, and this gives you the ability to pick either the type of vehicle that you have or just select off. Then you can select the size of the speakers you're using for your front stage, also for your rear stage, and also your subwoofer as well. So I'll go back to front, you can also choose the location of the speaker. To the right, you have your high pass crossover. Right now it's set to through. You have 30 all the way up to 200. Does not have that feature, only crossovers for the subwoofer. So the same options for the rear. And then on the sub, you have your low pass crossover as low as 30 Hertz, as high as 250. And then on the crossovers, you can choose the slope to six dB per octave, 12 dB per octave, 18 or 24 dB per octave. And there's also a gain control here in the negative. EQ, so on the EQ, you do have a parametric EQ that it defaults at. Here, you can just run your finger across the screen and that will adjust the band, or you can just tap the band you want and then move it from here. There are some presets on the bottom and there are also four user presets. Now, as mentioned, there is a parametric EQ, but I'll show you how to work that in a minute. Okay, next you have your position, DTA. This is your sound position. And here you can either select front left focus, front right focus, all front, or just all. Or if you do want to do an adjustment, you can actually get here and do time alignment. And so what you would simply do is measure from the center of the speaker to the center of, let's say, the driver side headrest, if that's the seat that you want to focus on. And then you would enter the measurements here, do the same thing with each speaker in the system, including the sub. Balance fade setup, also zone. So balance fade is self-explanatory, but you can move this around here, front, rear, side to side or you just hit center. So here you can select dual zone. So if you select dual zone, you can pick your front source here, in this case, HD radio. So if you wanted to listen to the HD radio on the front speakers, it will allow for that, and you would just control the volume from the face of the radio. Let's say you wanted to choose AVN for the rear source, that would play only the rear speakers, and then you have your volume control here. Volume offset. So volume offset allows you to control each source individually as far as the set volume is concerned. So let's say for instance, when you go from the radio to your USB or to your Bluetooth, then the Bluetooth is a little bit louder. So you can easily go in here and just take that down a little bit. That way when you switch from those two sources, there won't be such a dramatic change in volume. Next we have sound effect. Here you're able to adjust bass boost, loudness, volume leak EQ, and so forth. But let me show you how to use the parametric EQ. So here on the bottom, if you select parametric EQ to on, and then yes, and then you go to setup in order to adjust it. Now I'm not gonna go through this particular feature because it's a little in depth. If you're curious, then just go to our video that's dedicated to the KWZ1000W. We did a full tutorial on this. So you wanna go ahead and check that out if you wanna know how to use this. And since we're here, I'm gonna also show you the other feature, which is a professional feature that this radio has, which is called three-way networking. But in order to get the three-way networking, what you're gonna to have to do first is turn off the radio, go back into the audio settings, and then you're gonna hit the negative button and the home button at the same time. And this will allow you to switch over. And they are warning you that if you have your wiring hooked up incorrectly, that you could possibly damage things. So you wanna make sure before you get into this mode that it's set up properly first. So if I hit three way here and confirm with yes, and what you're gonna to have to do in order for this to be highlighted again, is go and turn your source on. And now I'm able to adjust high pass, band pass, and low pass. So really briefly, two way will only allow for high pass and low pass. Three way adds the extra band pass. And I'm not gonna go to depth with this feature as well because it does get pretty intense. So if you wanna check this out and you wanna know how it works, just go ahead and check out the tutorial for this JVC. Okay, so now let's talk about the display and the customization that you can do. So if you come here and you go to display and buttons, then you're able to adjust the button illumination to whatever color you want. As you can see, it's changing here on the bottom or you can do variable and it will rotate. 
Okay, I'm going to set it at blue. And then I'm going to go to wallpaper. Right now we're selected at the default, but there's some other really cool ones here as well. So you can select those. If you want static wallpaper, there are some preset pictures to choose from. You could also upload your own wallpaper using the JVC app. And now let's talk about the split widget. So on your home screen, you can either do a big widget or what they call a split widget. So on the top, you have the date and the time. If I swipe again, it tells me what source I'm on. Then you have a level meter, a compass. Then if you've downloaded pictures onto your JVC app, then these pictures will come up, all right? Now there's a couple different selections that you can go with when you go through this. So your level meter, you have that option. If you tap with two fingers, there's another option another option, and so forth. Same thing with the compass, there's one option, another option, and then also with your pictures. Now, if you choose big widget, then you have those same options. So there's your source, level meter, compass, pictures. Okay, so on to Apple CarPlay. So with Apple CarPlay, unlike the Jensen, this screen is extremely clean. There are no outside lines that I see around any of these apps. Looking at this screen versus the JVC with the Apple CarPlay looks much cleaner. It's definitely a huge difference. Okay, let's go back to the menu. Okay, so here you're able to select your connections. Again, this is your setup for your display. You have your user interface. Let's talk about the camera. So on the camera here, if you want to assign cameras, you have four to choose from. So you can assign your rear camera, turn your front camera on if you have one. Then you can do your third camera here, fourth camera here. Another good thing that this radio has is if you do have a front camera and you're parallel parking, when you put it in reverse, it will default and go to your rear camera, which is normal for most radios. But when you go put it in drive again, it will go to front camera and you can set that in front camera interruption. You can either turn that on or off and then when you turn it on, you can select either 10 seconds, 15 seconds, or 20 seconds in order for it to stay on after it's been triggered. Now, if you put it back into reverse, it will default and go back to the rear camera. And then you can set parking guidelines on or off. You have your system, demo, software information to make sure you got the latest software. Okay, one more thing that I didn't mention before. On the JVC, the volume button is here, but if you take your finger and you make a circle motion, you can adjust the volume as well. Okay, and that's gonna do it for the JVC. Okay, so let's take a look at the Jensen. So this is your home screen, and on here you have your sources, you have your radio, AV input, Bluetooth, USB, CD slash DVD, Bluetooth phone, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. If I swipe here, and then we have some more options to choose from, SD card input, AV in here, Bluetooth audio equalizer, and settings. So let's just go to the radio real quick. So you can either key in your favorite radio station or a radio station, or you can tune here. Presets are on the top. Okay, AV input is through the composite, so if you have a rear view monitor, you can connect the two together so that they're able to play the same thing. Bluetooth, let me scroll back here. You have the USB on the pigtail on the rear, which is for your Apple CarPlay and your Android Auto. There also is a USB on the front of the radio as well. It's behind that little panel. And then you have your CD slash DVD. Obviously, you can play music and videos through the DVD. That's a nice feature. Bluetooth phone, Android Auto, and Apple CarPlay. Then we have the mini SD input, and that is on the opposite side of the USB. So you flip that up, and there you can insert the mini SD. Then you have AV input here, Bluetooth audio, equalizer, and settings. So I'm just going to go into the equalizer really quick. So a little bit limited on this. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight band EQ. You can adjust here. is isn't like the camera where you can run your finger across it. So you have to pick a band and then choose at what level you want to adjust it. And then there are some presets on the top here. You have uh, pop music electric, jazz, rock, and classic. And then if you go here, you do have a user. So there's not presets on this, it's just user. So whatever you decide to do as far as adjusting the equalizer on its own, uh, you just only have one, let's say, preset. All right, next you have balance and fade. Um, so just, you can move the cursor around here. And then also you have your low pass filtering. So it's low pass filtering only for the subwoofer. Uh, does not do high pass and you can adjust the crossover frequency from as high as 640 as low as 55. All right, 
and then you do have a loudness on or off here. So pretty limited when it comes to audio settings on this radio, so it's pretty much bare bones. Give you a low pass filter, but not the high pass filter. I'm questioning why they would even do that, but okay, it is what it is. Okay, next, so let's just go into settings really quick. So here you can adjust your time, your date, beep, on or off, um, your audio settings here. This does have time alignment, you do it in this menu. And then here you have a number, I'm not sure uh, what these numbers actually mean. It doesn't say feet or uh, centimeters or inches. So I'm not 100% sure on how to set that up, uh, but it is there and you do have some presets here as well. Okay, you have loudness on and off, subwoofer, and then you also have a subwoofer gain here, okay? From zero, and then you go into the negatives. On the display, um, you can just choose the brightness and the dimmer mode, either auto, on or off. That's it, you can't choose your home screen, you can't customize the screen, it doesn't do any 3D wallpapering, nothing like that. So that blue background is what you get, so it's pretty basic. Okay, others. This will uh, default back to the factory setting. And then if you hit system version, this is gonna give you the firmware that's running. Okay, so now let's go into Apple CarPlay. I can say this, the display is bright, but there's lines around the phone. Uh, there's like a red line around the news. So it's decent. So obviously it's not as nice as the JVC, the 1080 by 720. Again, Jensen did not list the pixel count on this, so we're not too sure, but it's definitely not as high as the JVC. All right, so, um, most of you guys already used Apple CarPlay before, but if you do want to go back to the Jensen menu, you just hit here. Okay, so let's take a look at the Android Auto really quick. All right, so hit the home screen, and then you have your apps here, mapping here, and then you can either search previous, or you can type it in, or you can tell uh, Google Assist where you want to go. Now, let me go back to the home screen. So on here, I can definitely see that the screen is not as nice. It's a little blurry, and I know it's gonna be hard to tell um, on YouTube, but it's, I'm looking at it, and it's definitely blurry compared to the JVC. So I just wanted to make note of that as well. Okay, so that's pretty much it. It's pretty bare bones when it comes to the Jensen, but definitely it's reflected in the price. The Jensen is a very budget-friendly radio with minimal features. Now, we ran into a couple of these that are a little buggy, but you get what you pay for. Now, the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto features look pretty decent on this screen, but nothing compared to the way it looks on the JVC. The touch panel is surprisingly responsive, and if you're on a tight budget, this might be a good fit for you. The JVC is such an awesome unit with every feature you can ever want in a radio. Sound quality, flexibility, expandability, and the overall feel and user interface is second to none. Not to mention that we have found this unit to be flawless in its functionality. But is it really worth it? If you stay with us through this full video, we want to know. Just leave your answer in the comment section below. Okay, pros and cons on the Jensen. Like I mentioned, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. A 10.1 inch touchscreen. Oh, and the CD slash DVD player is a plus for video playback and music playback for all you old school, low tech folks out there. Okay, cons. No wireless CarPlay and no wireless Android Auto. No mirroring for either iPhone or Android. Limited EQing. And then no crossovers for the front and rear stage. Also, no HDMI input and only a single backup camera. And finally, limited mounting options, making it a little tough to fit in some vehicles. On to the JVC. Okay, pros and cons, starting with the cons. Now I mentioned this in the video where we featured this radio, and this radio has no HDMI output for a secondary monitor, but only important if you plan on adding a rear entertainment system. But that's about it when it comes to the cons. Okay, so pros, and there's a lot of them. Wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto wireless Android mirroring, and also the HDMI input, making it easy to mirror an iPhone. 13 band equalizer, and a professional setting that allows a parametric EQ and three-way networking. Six channel, five volt pre-outs. Easy to set up time alignment, dual audio zone, iDataLink Maestro compatible, HD radio, four camera inputs, and a beautiful, bright, bold 1080 by 720 HD 10.1 inch touchscreen. Now this radio is packed with great usable features that make it one of our top selling units despite the hefty price tag. But is it worth it? Our customers that have purchased this radio agree that it is. But what do you say? Leave your answer in the comment section below. We would love to know about it. 
But just like the saying goes, you get what you pay for, and both these radios offer great value at their given price. So that's gonna wrap it up for today. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Again, my name is Josh, I'm with Breaker Stereo and Performance. We'll see you next time, and thanks for watching.